Okay, well, today is supposedly June 21st, which is National Selfie Day, whatever that stupid thing is. It's just a distraction from what really uh, makes today significant and important is that it is summer solstice. That's where the sun is available for the most uh, hours of the day. And then after today, the sun starts to slowly fade away and we have less daylight until winter solstice. So the significance of that is that BMW has given me an i3, which is obviously an electric vehicle. So the thing here is, I appreciate this. I can actually use the summer solstice to make a point, is that you can use solar power to plug this car into your home and charge it and drive it off. What makes this one so special though is that it is a i3 with a range extender. So it has a two cylinder gas motor that runs off of a 1.9 gallon fuel tank that doesn't propel the vehicle as much as it does charge the system so that I can actually drive on electric. They brought this from Dallas today to my home here in Austin and it basically has no electricity in it. So I haven't charged it and what I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna daily vlog this car and my experience to see what it is like on a daily basis for the next week. I'm gonna try and do this daily at least though. So today I'm gonna drive it just on the gas tank with the range extender to see if I can even get from my home to downtown and back without having to refuel and without running out of power of some sort. This is also the first electric car I've driven. Technically I have driven a hydrogen powered car back in 2006 from Mercedes-Benz. It was more of a normal car with a hydrogen powertrain. This though is completely different. It's very futuristic, it's very expensive, and I haven't read the manual. I'm just gonna jump in it and see how well it works. Um, so come with me as I turn the cameras on. The door handle is really weird because it is keyless, right? But the way it opens, the handle opens backwards and of course the first thing that flips me out is not only the interior but suicide doors this though is questionable I, d I don't know what I feel I don't know I mean it's a car with a like plastic carbon reinforced body shell which you can see here and they went ahead and put a seatbelt on the door that opens from a safety perspective, that kind of, that might be a little spooky. Let's go ahead and turn the back camera on, which I left here. This hopefully will stay here all week, charged. Let's get that going. This, by the way, is the temporary charger, so I can plug this into the outlet at home, right? And then plug this in here. The problem with that is I'm only on 110 in the garage, and it will take forever to charge this thing, so. That's why today I'm not going to charge it. Tomorrow I will charge it at the office on one of those proper level 2 chargers. There's the rest of the interior. Um, this wood panel is interesting. It does open up. I thought it was a humidor. <laughs> Turns out it's just the location for the manual. There is no glove box down there. It's just up here. That would make a great humidor though. Obviously it's lockable. It's uh, interesting. So here we go. I'm going to get in the car and see how this works. I have the key, by the way, in my pocket. This is what it looks like. Nice profile. I won't need to stick it anywhere except my pocket, so I'll just keep it there. Okay, so this is my first time in the BMW i3. I've never driven one ever. Uh, let's see if I can even figure out. Okay, there's a stop start button, so I'll put my foot on the tiny brake pedal and turn the volume down for a second there we go so it's a hundred degrees outside I hear things kicking in let me turn the temperature to something a little bit more realistic and then the fan speed down so you can hear me so even on a 100 degree day the sacrifices I make so that you guys can enjoy these videos um, <laughs> really are uncomfortable sacrifices so please be sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe and share this information and, and uh, the more the merrier because 
it allows you to bring more cars. Cars on, the AC feels to be working. Where's the grab handle? That must be it. Um, how do I reset? Actually, let's look at, it's one o'clock. There's 3,336 miles on this car. And it says my range is 68 miles. So that's not gonna be enough to get me to and from. But we have different modes down here. We have comfort and eco. Let's see, eco pro, which definitely kicked down the AC a little bit. Uh, and if I go eco pro plus, maximum range without climate control, and no, 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 no. Eco Pro Plus is a no here in Texas. So I'm gonna try Eco Pro today. Um, parking brake, set that on for a second. It's an electronic parking brake. I have an ash can, which is weird, in a uh, electric vehicle that you would think is more or less tuned for people who don't smoke. Of course I have BMW Assist and LED lighting in here. No sunroof though, and at $54,000, that's a shocker. And I like how it tells me what mode I'm in. That's kind of cool. Is that right? Yeah, it does. It tells me what mode I'm in. I like that. All right, get my seatbelt on. Here we go. Um, Reverse must be down. Yep, that's reverse. Got a backup camera there. I'd like to say it's silent, but right now all I can hear is the air conditioning. Oh, wow. So if I don't even put my foot on the accelerator, it will actually <laughs> cruise to a stop, basically. It's it's com it will completely stop in reverse. Look at this, my foot's off the gas, accelerator, stopped. So now I'm gonna go forward to drive. We're not even creeping forward. There we go, now I put my foot on the accelerator and we are off. Okay, if I knew how to reset the trip, I would. Maybe it's that button over there? Yep, okay, so I'm resetting the tripodometer. Maybe for today, maybe for the seven week, seven days uh, for the week I have it, I don't know yet. And obviously I have some sort of a display to show the power consumption. So I usually don't give driving impressions for the first few days because it does take a while, especially when you're coming out of a different vehicle. I recently came out of a Mini Cooper Countryman all four, which is an all wheel drive, four door Mini Countryman. Now I'm in an i3 and they're different vehicles and I can't immediately judge anything because they're so they're so uh, disparate everything's so different I can't I can't go oh well you know you know what I'm talking about we'll just wait for a few days to really get a good driving impression um, first things first though it does have turn signals and I am using them so it's not an option turn signals are standard and uh, they're here on the left side of the steering wheel BMWs do have them what else do we have here just a large interior basically so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, head out towards the freeway I'm gonna keep the cameras rolling and if I have something to say I will let you know I know this has really narrow tires and I can definitely feel that when I'm going through a left turn out of my neighborhood. Something to think about too is it pays to coast to the red light because when you do that, actually the, uh, the deceleration is pretty aggressive. It's a little harder to coast to the red light, but when you are doing that, it's actually charging the battery pack so I don't know if it's more efficient to coast at the last minute and let it completely break or if you just have to feather your way off the accelerator till you come to the red light but it will completely stop I'm hoping it actually illuminates the brake lights I mean technically it should be uh, I, don't, 
don't know though. Alright, green, let's go for it. Another thing I want to mention that was embarrassing actually, almost a year ago I had a Camaro four-cylinder and I was on one of these roads out here in Texas and a BMW i3 was next to me and I just had white stripes, you know, horsepower stripes on my hood. It was a press car and the i3 just bolted off the line. The four-cylinder Camaro couldn't keep up, at least from zero to 30, but then it finally uh, beat the i3. But what I'm looking forward to is, is when I do have a full charge the next day is to put this into sport mode or whatever mode that's not comfort or eco and see how well this thing gets off the line because that would be a lot of fun. In the meantime though, this is me getting acquainted with an i3. Um, the noisiest thing is the air conditioning so far. I have auto headlights. I have no idea where the windshield wipers are controlled from. Oh, right down here. Okay, so I have auto wipers. Everything you'd expect in a regular car. Pretty good. Oh, man. When I take my foot off the accelerator just for a moment, it feels like it's braking. It, it doesn't even coast. That's so counterintuitive right now. I feel like it should just release and just go. Uh, coast, you know, like sail, like it's in neutral, in an eco mode instead of actually trying to recharge itself. But I do see the range has gone up now. It's at 82 miles. Ugh, I cannot get used to this accelerator. I want to just take kind of like coast to this upcoming light where everyone stopped in traffic, but I can't do that. I'll stay in Eco Pro though. I'm gonna go grab a uh, stereotypical drink. I'm not wearing any yoga pants today. I haven't fit in yoga pants in quite a while, which is probably a good thing. And I have never had kombucha or soy lattes, but this won't convert me so quickly. I will though grab a coffee and then head over to where I'm going and we will see how this thing works. I'm basically heading to downtown Austin right now. Okay, so I do get the map on the large display, but it's very far away and it's pretty grim as far as the color palette it's not vibrant enough it does show traffic though okay I guess I need to use the brake for the first time I hear something running it might be the actual two-cylinder engine using gasoline to charge the batteries to power the air conditioning I don't know what that button does All intelligent safety systems switched off. So that's what it says there on the screen when I hit this button. So when it's on, it's a green circle and it says frontal collision warning on. Now if I take my foot off the brake, it coasts forward. All right. Warning and brake intervene. Okay. Well, I didn't read that in time, but obviously it has anti-collision systems. Let's go for it. My first impression here, obviously uh, it feels like it's going to be compared to the Mini right now, but this car definitely translates a lot of undulation in the pavement into the body and it feels like it's damping that with the suspension, but the weight, it feels like there's a lot of weight, and if anyone knows about weight, it's me. Uh, it feels like it's trying to cope and give a smooth ride, but at the same time, I don't think it can help itself. The layout on the HVAC is pretty intuitive. It takes up a lot of space, though. I do like the simplicity of it, though. Okay, my range is still at 82 miles. I've done four and a half miles so far. To be honest, I'm actually kind of bored right now. I mean, there's really nothing going on. It's very simple as far as the layout and the buttons. I guess I could play with Radar Cruise. Um, yeah, let's try that. 
So I figure I'm gonna hit cruise control button, cruise control ready, and then I'm gonna hit set. And it's set. And then I have a distance setting. What it is, okay, it is auto braking. So I wonder how that will help with eco mode. So if I hit the resume button here on cruise control, when the traffic proceeds, this will proceed. Um, let me see, I guess I can press the up button to go to the speed limit of 45. There's a detent here. The first selection is at one mile an hour increments. And then if you push it past that, it goes in five mile an hour increments. So you can update cruise control speed to the speed limit change quicker. Okay, so the traffic ahead of me is now turning right. This thing will... Hmm. It takes the entire intersection before it actually speeds up again. So what is that? 80 to 100 feet. Meanwhile, it makes it look like I'm a jackass because I'm not accelerating through the intersection. I'm just kind of hanging there. Let's see if it recognizes. Nope. Uh, nope. So it's not recognizing slow moving vehicles. It's almost treating them as if they're completely stopped. Some radar cruise control systems don't honor stopped cars. I think the only one that does is Infinity. Infinity has a pretty good anti-collision system. This one is not so far not as advanced as the Audi system which will recognize slowly moving cars okay so cruise is off because I hit the brake I'm just gonna hit the accelerator and go take this corner it it does throw the weight around kind of just like that mini did as far as you feel centered in the wheelbase and I know the weights down low because that's where the battery pack is I just cannot get used to this deceleration, huge deceleration, when I take my foot off the accelerator. I'm going to get on the freeway now to the second exit. Range now says 78 miles, and I'm now getting on the freeway. So let's see what happens when I go up to freeway speeds. Let's kind of give it some juice here. 70 miles an hour and we'll just hit set. All right, so now we're at 70, speed limit 70, cruise control set to 70, range is 77, 6.7 miles into my trip. Right now, the straight line stability isn't so good. I think this thing is very slippery, but at the same time, the wind seems to be blowing it around a lot. It's not a windy day. I can't tell if I have blind spot assist in here. You'd figure that, that an electric car, they would cut down weight as much as possible before adding batteries. <laughs> what bothers me about electric cars these days is not only the residual values, but, you know, there, there used to be the days in the space race where we had the Apollo moon missions, and those Apollo space capsules were all about shaving amps. You know, every bit counts. And here we are in these electric cars, and we got electric heated seats, we got electric air conditioning. We have all the things that we need and expect in a modern car, radar crews and all that. But at the same time, I don't think there is a way to measure, like we measure miles per gallon. How many miles can I get per kilowatt hour, right? There's like this E range of miles per charge. That's not really important. The important thing is, if I can buy a car with an incremental amount of battery capacity, let's just say, what is the difference between the normal capacity and doubling my capacity? So when, when BMW doubles the capacity of the i3's battery, does that actually translate to more range or does that additional weight kind of reduce that efficiency to a point where maybe you're only 75% better off with a 50% larger capacity or even doubled. You know, wh where where do we cut these things off with these, these electric vehicles? Where do we say, how many kilowatt hours does it take to go 100 miles, right? We know some cars with 
75 kilowatt hours can go 200 miles. But uh, this thing's not so good over speed bumps. You gotta go slowly, which is easy to do actually, because when you take your foot off the accelerator, practically wants to stop in front of these speed bumps. And the torque can go start at zero basically. So at one RPM, this thing's got full torque. You can go right over these speed bumps without worrying about resistance. Anyway, back to the kilowatt hours. I think we really need to figure out what a measure is to say we can predictably figure out it's going to take 100 kilowatt hours overnight to charge a battery and out of those 100 kilowatt hours you can go so many miles. I don't think that exists right now which is why I'm mentioning this. The window switch is right here. Only the two windows in front go down. That's it. No sunroof either. It actually kind of feels big for a, a city car that it's supposed to be, you know? City cars should be tiny and very navigable through the city streets. It, it does have a tight turning circle. And I love the hypocrisy of rolling through a stop sign. Of course, stop signs in parking lots are not really enforceable, so that's the whole point of doing it. To show the hypocrisy of having a, a car that doesn't use fuel and you know, it's kind of efficient not to completely stop in a gasoline car because you're not constantly using fuel to accelerate out. But in an electric car, you know, you're not using gas. So you should come to a complete stop, right? Let's go. Wow. That acceleration is pretty cool. I'm sure I'll be paying for that, though. Yeah. My range is now dropped. <laughs> it's now at 72 mile range. I don't think I'll make a round trip. We're gonna find out. What I want to do basically is is go to downtown and back, right? Because if you're a suburbanite, you're gonna be out in the burbs and then going commuting to downtown to work and then coming back. It, it wouldn't make sense to have to charge the car every night because then it would be like the dog. Did you walk the dog? Did you feed the dog? Did you clean up after the dog? Did you pet the dog? A car should not be a pet. So it should just be a, a device, not necessarily an appliance, but it should be a, a device or a tool that propels and provides uh, the, the, the basis for the freedom that you want, which is mobility and it should get you places, but it shouldn't be something where you have to care for it. Um, electric cars, because they don't have engines, obviously gas engines that require more maintenance, what this means is that your electric car should be more carefree. But it seems the blowback is that you have to constantly charge it, constantly maintain your driving habit and driving style so that you don't get stuck. So we're going to see how well that works. Back on the freeway now, so let's just enjoy the ride to downtown. I do like Radar Cruise. I have it in my A3. I used to have it in an A6 two years ago. I didn't like it then, but I think people's driving styles have definitely changed in the last two years, especially here in Austin. They seem to have gotten worse, so you kind of expect worse drivers everywhere now, like in this case. Yeah, it's handling that quite well. It's heartbreaking for sure through itself, but I think the regenerate the regenerative braking aspect helps with that. But I mean, it's a typical Toyota Camry driver pulling onto a 65 mile an hour freeway at 30 miles an hour, trying to merge at 30 miles an hour. We were doing 65. Now we have to heartbreak. I kind of don't get surprised by that bullshit anymore. I think they have maintained algorithms on these cars as they release new software to help cope with these stupid drivers. And it makes it a little bit more tolerable now. Before, I was, it was kind of nerve-wracking to be in an expensive vehicle that might possibly crash into something on its own, but still have it be your fault because you're liable behind the wheel anyway. At this point, though, 
Radar cruise is set to 65, speed limit 65. We're constantly adjusting speed. Um, I have a way to change the range here. I have it set on one, but if I increase the range, which in this car is opposite, by the way, if I increase the range, it creates more of a gap and then more people slip in. So uh, it's, it's a, it's a lose-lose situation here in Austin. I'll just show you, I'm behind a truck pulling crap. He obviously doesn't want to lose his load, but he's also all over the road. Here's the button, by the way. This looks like it would increase the distance, and this looks like it would decrease the distance, but it's the actual opposite. I hit that button, and it shrinks the gap. So that means closer to the car in front, and that means further from the car in front. That's as close as it will follow. That looks to be about three car lengths. So it is buying a gap still, because if anyone pulls in, this gap is bigger than what an Audi would leave. And it's also a bigger gap than what the Infiniti left. I drove an Infiniti Q60 Red Sport, and it didn't leave this kind of gap. So let's see how these people merge. Everyone signals, my car accelerates a little bit, and then Braking, he's braking, everyone's braking for no freaking reason. And now I went from 49 to 41. We're going back up again. So this is just painful. And now there's a gap and someone comes in. I do hear a weird noise off that windshield. It's like if you're underwater and a boat goes by and its prop is whirring around, there's like this this uh, high-pitched scratchy chalkboard sound. And I hear it when there's a car in front of me. It's coming off this window. It is a weird sound. And it's every car that has been driving by. I don't know if it's this car making noise or if it's like the road noise translating through this big windshield. I don't feel any lumbar support on this thing either. That's kind of annoying. Then again, you're not really supposed to be in a commuter car for a long time. The whole point is having a short commute. So uh, it's not like I would do a long road trip. Who would do a long road trip in this car? Come on. The thing about BMW air conditioning is you can for years, decades actually, you put it in auto mode and it, it handles the flow of the air and the temperature of the air, but it doesn't handle the, the fan speed. So the fan speed is controlled by me and it, it's not fully auto then, is it? It's, it's kind of like half auto. I, in normal cars, I can set the temperature and it will maintain the temperature with fan speed and air mixture in the I never really get fluctuations of hot or cold you know but here in the BMW I, I am getting these uh, responses of oh it's too warm in here now but I didn't change these the air I have to actually just increase the fan speed the problem with that is that's the only thing I hear in this car beyond all the road noise I don't hear the engine there really isn't one, but sometimes the fan noise is too loud for these cameras to pick it up. So most of the modern cruise control systems now have traffic sign recognition where it will see the sign and then if your cruise control is set it will change the cruise control to the, to the sign. Now the latest ones do have that, this one doesn't. Some people may go, oh, well then forget about it, it's not the latest, but looking in front of me, when the vehicles slow down, I slow down anyway because I'm radar attached to them. So it, it really makes no difference whether this can recognize that sign or not, unless I'm driving the first of the pack, right? But when you're behind traffic, which you would be in this because this isn't a sports car and it's not a luxury, uh, long distance cruiser, you're going to be kind of in the middle of the traffic anyway. You're going to adhere to them. You don't really need that much technology, which is fine because it reduces the cost, it reduces the weight, reduces a lot of stuff. 
so far so good with that. Actually, when I say it reduces the weight, code doesn't weigh anything in the in the uh, physical sense, but it it may it may weigh something if you have to add modules or cameras or sensors. You know, that's extra weight, that's extra cost. I know that code comes at an extra cost. I can guarantee you that. Beautiful move there, Honda Accord. Beautiful move. You still didn't even accelerate. I'm going to change this from the daily vlog of the i3 experience to shitty drivers of Austin. They're everywhere. Actually, to be fair, when it gets this hot out, people do stupid stuff. I know I did stupid stuff with my SQ5 review. The heat is just oppressive, and there's really nothing you can do to counter it. You get so stupid, you don't know how stupid you are. That's dangerous, too. And here's completely stopped traffic. Let's see how this car handles it. Uh, my foot's over the brake. It's doing this on its own. Uh, it's freaking out. It doesn't like it, but it's doing it. Okay. And then people, people overreact around here, man. Outrageous. They wait to the last minute to brake, and then they brake too hard. And they don't time things correctly. Of course, I left a gap with my radar cruise, and this jackass comes in. It's any wonder why I actually review cars at all, because driving around here is just a pain in the ass. The tires in here are pretty noisy, too. They, they obviously sound like they're inflated to huge numbers, astronomical PSI. The ride seems okay when you hit expansion joints, but the sound is deafening. So here I am in stop and go traffic, and I am liking this accelerator pedal a little bit more now. I haven't really hit the brakes in this whole drive so far. Maybe twice? That's how strong the regenerative braking is. And that's Eco Pro mode. I don't know about the other modes. There's Austin. 24.2 miles driven, range 70. Austin. There's 6th Street. 36th as we call it. It's kind of deceptive because when I take my foot off the accelerator it feels like it's auto braking as if the radar is braking. Some cars like the Infinities will do that. This is not doing that though. So if you own an Infinity you definitely don't want to mistake the, the braking in this car for the auto braking in your Infinity. That could be a disaster. What I'm basically saying is if that car does brake harder than this can decelerate, I feel like it should be braking auto automatically like this, and it wasn't, and I have to freak out and hit the brake. So a good note to think there is that if you're behind an I-3 and it suddenly stops, once you see those brake lights, you better, you better uh, be ready for hard braking. We're learning here, we're learning. Quick learning, picking these things up as we go. I haven't even read the manual yet. I still feel like I've been able to control everything. This cluster here for the gear selection, which actually isn't a gear selection, it's just a movement choice, um, is the only really funky thing here. The second funky thing is the deceleration from the auto regen braking. That's really strong. Let's change lane. The sticker price is shocking, the lack of a sunroof at that price is shocking, the lack of power seats is understandable, but shocking at this price, and there's no blind spot assist. I don't even know if this has the Harman Kardon stereo. I haven't even turned that on, and I really can't. I haven't turned it on and I really can't because music becomes a copyright issue with content. If I play music on the video that has been copyrighted, and I respect that uh, the videos will get flagged and I lose the monetary aspect and the monetary aspect is key right now because I'm driving a car that has a full tank of fuel but it's only 1.9 gallons and I'd have to refuel it on my own for the next seven days at this point maybe every day and that's an expense to me 
and these ads definitely won't buy that fuel I know that uh, the amount of money these videos make it's not gonna add up to two gallons of gas a day just this one video not gonna happen so I have to maximize the efficiency and also leverage the, all the electricity usage the big question is is that electricity gonna be free is it even there so at my office tomorrow I'm going to charge this vehicle at work on a level two charger and it'll be a full charge I can go full electric I can put it in sport mode we can do all that but today is about what the hell is this thing and so far do I like it more than the mini that's not even a question you can't compare two cars like that back to back that's why it takes me a few days of driving to come up with whatever I'm in whatever that story is and you're watching along right now as I do this what is this vehicle what is the story what is the purpose of this and how does the story convey that now again I told you about the whole misconceptions the king of the commute King Friday I can commute better than anyone else because I'm in an i3 look at me right when I'm inside I don't get that feeling I don't feel like I'm any better than anybody else even at 54 grand but from the outside it looks like I have that oppression that's a stereotype or a judgment we don't know but if more cars come out like this like why can't Honda make these why can't Honda just make all their cars electric right there is an electric car company that makes all electric cars but they're not cheap are they you want a Tesla you better pay up and on top of that you're gonna keep paying for it because they have new models new software new blah 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 that's just they're trying to push that boundary and make that the norm again coming back to I don't want a car to be my pet I want it to do things but I don't want to do things for it this is where I am I'm gonna have to draw the line like I don't want a car that I have to keep caring for if the whole point of an electric car is a car that you don't have to keep maintaining all the time at the shop so now I don't have to go to the shop my garage is the shop Oh, it's going to download this. Oh, it's going to update that. Oh, I got to plug it in. Oh, did I check this? No. And so we'll know after a few days and a few uh, cycles here what the end result of this experience is going to be. And that's, that's what I hope to convey here. So please subscribe. Please hit that bell. I'll tell you what it doesn't corner like that many did but I'm not comparing it to the mini not com see that's dangerous there is this other side to acceleration where you don't hear a motor or any noise to uh, suggest the thrust that you're that you're experiencing is, is fast so it's just a silent propulsion and that may give a false sense of, of speed because you're like oh uh, and I had that in the Audi S4 and the S5, but mainly the Audi S4. You hear it, you don't really hear much noise, and it sounds slowly, it sounds like a slow acceleration, but you look down and you go, whoa, I'm already doing 80. This car, um, I can see how I, I beat, I was beaten by that i3 when I was driving that four cylinder Camaro. This thing just off the line. To a certain extent. So maybe part of the price of 54 grand is you're paying for acceleration, but that's Tesla's game. You know, Tesla charges a lot of money, and then when anything goes wrong or someone starts criticizing them, they go, Yeah, but we got the fastest electric cars. Yeah, but our cars are faster than the Porsche Turbo. Blah, 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 blah. I don't really care. It's still just an electric car. Is it going to be better? If you haven't thumbs up yet, please thumbs up. I'm actually in a BMW using turn signals. All right, so I'm gonna go to this place that I hang out at once in a while to get some creativity uh, injected into me through uh, 
carelessness and downright crude statements. So I want to park this car here and see if anyone wants to uh, throw some judgment its way. See how it puts up with it. Park. So pull up the brake. Parking brake is set. Push down on P. It's in park. I don't feel anything different. Take my foot off the gas. Okay, so it's not going to auto turn off. So I'm in park. Just push down on here. Parking brake is set. If I open the door, accessory is still active. Hit start and stop. So they show it as a circle, but it's actually this square thing here. Charge status low. No shit. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, so there's a change in plans. Why, why just limit myself to driving one place and then not another? What if I decide I want to go get lunch, right, or dinner, and go somewhere? What if I want to break outside my normal commute and just go somewhere? So let's find out. Uh, start, and then put in reverse. Okay, it says my range is 51 miles. Well, I just took a trip back. I just went and grabbed a bite to eat and my range had dropped considerably. If I turn this on for a second, you'll see now my range is 54, 53. So it's constantly adjusting. I only went down the block to get a bite to eat at Pokey Pokey, this great place. And you can see it's kind of adjusting right now. So my worry right now is can I get home tonight Probably, but can I get to the office tomorrow, which has the big level two charging system, without having to stop for fuel to have the motor charge the car? I want to be able to just go an entire day here in downtown and back out and to the office the next day and do an errand, which was to go get dinner. How will this work on a daily basis for someone who doesn't want to charge a vehicle every day nor fill it up with gas every day as an alternative? So you'll see here it says 48 miles, and I'm just gonna turn it off now to preserve the energy that is left. And um, well, when I get back in the car, you'll see it says charge status low right now. But when I get back in the car and head home, I only have one camera left. It's the one back there that's still uh, working in this heat. That camera and that camera have actually died in this heat, which, and this one too which is a sign that um, in Texas here, I mean, obviously we needed air conditioning to stay uh, comfortable. Actually, it's also to prevent heat shock, but also it, it affects the battery life. So I wonder if, if this battery will continue to, to fluctuate in range before I get home. Maybe, maybe parking it overnight. Um, hopefully it won't continue to lose. We'll find out. Okay, time to go home. Let's see if I can make it all the way from home to downtown, run an errand, and then go back home just on the range extender. Real world test here. The sun shade is not extending out so I have this whole area here where the uh, well the Sun is coming through and it cannot be blocked so that's that's not a good thing uh, I'd expect at least an extending Sun sunshade in a fifty four thousand dollar vehicle Well, that concludes day one, and right now I can tell you I haven't had to fill up. We still have 24 miles left on the range, and you can see there is some fuel left in that little 1.9 gallon tank. Overall, the car, um, look at that, the battery just died on that camera back there. <laughs> Perfect timing.
anyway, it was a interesting drive. I was in eco mode. I found out that it actually defaults to comfort when you get back in the vehicle. So I didn't even know I wasn't in eco pro until I looked over here and didn't see that icon. So there's some stuff I've been learning without reading the manual so far. Pretty good. Um, tomorrow though is when the fun begins because I am not going to refuel. I'm going to take this from my house to my office where there is a level two charger. I'm going to charge it there at work. My whole point is I shouldn't have to charge it every day or refuel it every day uh, to really make it worthwhile. So I was able to go from the suburbs downtown and back, but can it get me around? Uh, there are other situations too where I had to go to dinner. Well, let's just say right now it's a great sunset and I wanted to go meet a girlfriend somewhere and go get a glass of wine, even though I don't drink, uh, and enjoy the sunset. With this kind of range, I'd have to plan around charging tonight for several hours before I can even think about getting to work. So there are some limitations here. We're gonna figure this out over the course of the next seven days. So be sure to subscribe, click the bell, do the whole thing on YouTube so that you can get the updates, all right? So thank you for watching, thank you for the thumbs up, and obviously if you thumb down, then you're just a pretty sensitive person. Maybe you shouldn't watch the rest of them. Thank you very much, see ya.